Testing, testing. Damn it. So that should be it now. Just double check it. You getting any sound at all? Probably turn myself up quite a bit. Testing, testing. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Ifly Festival of Miles. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Ifly Festival of Miles. The famous track where Roger Bannister broke that, that infamous four-minute mile 50 years and more ago. 
3.59.4 was the time he set that day. I wonder if we're going to get a sub four mile clocking later on in the afternoon. But first, we've got 13 open races, a mixture of boys, girls, men and women. And this is race two. You would have just seen race one. And I do apologize. Uh, we've just ironed out the technical issues with the audio. So you should be able to hear my voice now for the next couple of hours here at Iffy Road. And of course, we have to thank our sponsors, Sports Shoes, for helping out with the event. They've done a brilliant job with the banners and the archway as well. But look, that's enough from me. Let's run you through the lineup as they wait. Starters orders. And on the inside, that is Dan Weimer. Wearing bib number 191. 145 next to him, Rob Palmer. We've got Amy Kent, the Oxford University student. Ailey Roberts as well, also an Oxford University student. You can spot those in their dark blue of Oxford. Richard Seddon next to them. James Hamilton, Xavier Laurent. Emily Channon, Emily Bradley, Stuart Thorpe, and Brian Green. So this race probably going to operate. We have Tom Barrett pacemaking it. Probably going to operate around about five minutes in 40 seconds. So well sub six minute marling, we hope, for these uh, athletes today. They want to try and target around about 248 at the 800 meter split. So away they go then, a little late with the clock, so there's a little bit of a delay on that. You can see the electronic timing there, so two or three seconds behind, so do apologize for that. But Barrett to the front then, as all the athletes pretty much settle down through this first 100 meters. Obviously a mile, four laps of the track as opposed to the more commonly run 1500 meters in the UK. So away they go then, settling in nicely, a little bit of jostling for position, as they can trust Tom Barrett. Fresh off a sub two minute 800 meter performance, the pacemaker. And it looks like slowing in behind him, that's Rob Palmer straight in behind. Amy Kent up there as well, the Oxford athlete. So we can get them through 400, see what, they, see what they're see what operating around about, see their predicted time. Of course, great opportunity to come down and run the mile here at Ifley. Not an event which is run too much anymore. Like I was saying, it is all about the 1500 meters. The metric mile, as they call it. So here they go, then coming down the home straight. Nice pack of them, and of course, this being the first Ifley Festival of Miles in a long, long time, they're back, and one of the things the meet directors and the gentleman putting on this meet they wanted to do was make sure the races were stacked, had enough people, and there was a serious vetting process to make sure people were in the right race to ensure races are competitive out here today as well. And what they didn't want is races sort of stringing out too much. They wanted plenty of races within races. So it looks like it is Amy Kent, the Oxford student, tucking in behind Tom Barrett. And making light work of that first lap then. So two Oxford students at the front. And if you're just joining us, that is Tom Barrett leading the way. He is pacing. No number on his vest. The true leader of this race is Amy Ken. In behind her, we got Rob Palmer. And in behind him, the Cambridge student, Emily Bradley. And as you can see, plenty of athletes warming up on the infield as well, getting ready for their races. Like I say, this is race two of 13 before we approach those elite races later on tonight. So we're going to make sure the atmosphere is booming. The stands to my left, I can tell you, is really filling up. Crowd started to make some noise, lap on lap out there. Amy Kent going to come through well on pace. You know, they wanted around about 2.48. I can say the official clock is on 2.46. So Barrett doing a phenomenal job pacing and Kent looks good. She almost looks like she wants Barrett to step off to the side, but I'm sure he's going to try and take her through three laps if he can. 1,200 meters makes a big, big difference. You know, two laps, of course, only just halfway in the mile. So if you can get someone to carry you around for three, you really can push yourself and drive on. So we got a nice little cluster of three there as well. Like I said, it's Palmer. Emily Bradley in there, the Cambridge student as well. It looks like the Oxford man. It could be Stuart Thorpe up there as well. So will those three work, work their way back up to Kent? Kent, Barrett pulls aside. Kent left on her own now. 
It's going to be a bit of a dust up over the final 400 meters, I feel. As if, if that is Stuart Thorpe. He's got a strong personal best himself. Over the 1500 meter mark and he's just going to move on to the shoulder of Kent. It's going to be all about how Kent can respond now coming into this final lap. As they come down the home straight for the penultimate time. Four minutes just ticking over on the clock now. Four minutes. And Kent looks good. Looks like she has plenty of running in there. She's going to want to hold off the Cambridge athlete Bradley as well. Of course, huge rivalry. Varsity was here just a few weeks ago on the women's side. The Oxford women actually came out on top. Kent, a part of that team. So leading the way. Can she hold off Thorpe? The Oxford man. 176. He kind of eases by. Kent's going to have to respond. She's going to have to battle in there. Hang in there as well for a personal best, of course. This meet designed for quick times just as much as it is a part of racing out here as well. So, But Thorpe looks good. He's easing away down the back straight. Kent, and it's going to be Bradley as well, stalking her, the Cambridge athlete. It's going to be an interesting final 200 of Oxford v Cambridge. Varsity here just a couple weeks ago. But Thorpe easing his way now. And what could Palmer do over the final 200? He's in the mix in fourth place as well. So here we are then, race three. And if you're just joining us, welcome to the Ifley Festival of Miles. Saturday the 4th of June, and of course, I hope you're all having a brilliant bank holiday weekend.
He sees it's. Sort of some sort of sound. That could be the announcer. So yeah, that's that's static. That that must be static. Bit of background noise. So. Okay. 
Okay, mate. It's not even... Well, here we go then. You have just been watching race three of 13 and we're coming up just to 200 meters to go. I do apologize for the lack of commentary on this one and obviously the clock, but out front is the Radley man, Chris McCauley, number 135 and he is storming around and I can report he's hit five minutes is just ticking over now on the clock. The early leader in this one was Beatrice Monroe, an Oxford University student. She did kind of the hard graft following Tom Wood early in this race. But yeah, Chris McCauley, absolute phenomenal run. He's to smash this last lap coming down the home straight. Here he comes. And he's going to be maybe just inside 5.20 on the clock. It's just outside as it ticks over. But look, 5.23 and things are starting to hot up here at the Effley Festival of Miles. This is race three. And here comes a new score as well of Oxford. Ryan Elliott as well. Wow, and the your two Oxford students there. Basically a dead heat on the line. And Nuska and Elliott. Phenomenal running from them. That's good. She's going to be close to her personal best, is Anuska. And Tara Singh as well, just crossing the line. Well, that's race three. Race three over and done with. And as you can see, very tight, compact field. So I was mentioning earlier about the vetting process that went into this. You know, it wasn't just an enter and you're in. They wanted to make sure people all in the right race of similar abilities, similar levels, so they can, so the races can be competitive out here. Phenomenal job put on by the boys here at the Ifley Festival of Miles. The Oxford University students have put this event on. Meet director Tom Renshaw. I'm sure we'll catch up with him later, get him on for a little interview, but... You know, such a historic track. They wanted to provide something for the community here at Oxford and obviously grow it as well and attract elites. And that's one thing they've done at this meeting is done a phenomenal job in attracting elite athletes. We're going to have a crack at the sub four minute mile. Of course, Roger Bannister, 359.4, just over 50 years ago. And so we're going to see if we can get close to that mark. Track record here, of course, 356 as well so look out for that but look let's run you through the lineup there that there number 66 that is belinda dow oxford university student women's team captain last year as well in her final year of studies someone who's been an absolute pivotal role in the oxford university program here as well and alongside her oxford university student julia bodulis as well all the way over from america from Boston, I believe, studied out there as well. Typically a half marathon and marathon performer. I know she's going to target a marathon later on in the year as well. And she's got a half in a week or so time up in Swansea. But some good speed work for her. And then next to her, Thames Heron Hounds. Athlete Claire Hammett. Fresh off a 5,000 meter personal best on Wednesday night. 17.30 over 5K. So that's the kind of standard of the field we got here. Yeah, well inside 18 minutes, 5K for most of these competitors. They're going to be paced by Sam Nelson. There he is on the outside, a 400-meter runner. So he's going to have to do a few more laps of the track. They're going to make him work here at Oxford. But yeah, a few more in the field then. That's Claire Elms on the inside, number 77. Marcus Brown doesn't look to be in this one. So he's, he's scratched. Jenny Milne. We've got Lee Godbert as well in the uh, almost the jockey singlet there.
Norman, Ukura as well. So as they wait the starters orders, 158, David, Renshaw, Guilford, and Godamink. I wonder if that is any relation to Mr. Thomas Renshaw, meat director as well. It could be his father, but I could be wrong. So don't quote me on that one. Jeremy Musselwhite. It's a great name as well. 101, Gary James. James Quinn on the outside. Number 155, Reading AC Athlete. Uh, the short journey up from Reading. And 101 there in the sunglasses. Yeah, you can't miss him. Gary James in the purple vest and the shade. So this is going to be race four of 13. Sam Nelson looking to take them through in around about two minutes in 38 seconds. So these athletes, I mean, that previous race obviously won in, you know, just a shade outside 520. This group of athletes will want to just dip below that 520 mark. So what can they do out here as well? My one to watch would be Claire Hammett. I think she can uh, possibly attack the five-minute barrier as well. Could Claire... She's in good form, like I say, fresh off for 5,000 meter personal best. But what can the rest of the field do? As they just await the starters' orders. This just to go off at 3:51, so we're just running, you know, two or three minutes late here at Ifley Road. But plenty of time to catch up throughout the afternoon. May I add? And yes, if you're just joining us, or if you've been watching us, I do apologize for a few technical issues we've had with the commentary and the sound on the stream, but hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, they all ironed out now. You can enjoy some good quality racing. Enjoy your bank holiday as well. So here we go then, race four. Elms, Dow, Milne, Godba, Yukia, Badulis, Hammett, Harris, Renshaw, James, and Quint. And Jeremy Musselwhite, I can't see on the start line, so he is also another scratch. And away they go. Then a few of them starting their watches, of course. They want to upload Mr. Strava, let friends and family know their new mile personal best. Let's hope there's a few PBs today as well. So away they go then. They need a trust in Nelson. He's a 400 meter man, so he's accustomed to getting out hard and getting to the front of races, which he's done. And I think he just wants to check his shoulder a little bit just to make sure the athletes are following him. But Belinda Dow. The previous Oxford University captain straight to the front then. She means business today. She's going to test herself over the mile to, uh, after a pretty solid training block as well. Just coming back from injury is Belinda. But yes, as we said in, Nelson takes him through 200. Probably a little bit too quick. Inside 40 seconds. So, you know, I make that 80s, which to be fair... Is 5.20 miling, so we'll, we'll get his 400-meter uh, split, which will be a little bit more accurate as well. And I have had some confirmation from Tom Renshaw, the meet director himself, who's done a phenomenal job, along with others here at Ifley Road, to put on this meet for everyone that it is his father in the green, and David Renshaw. So there we go then, through, I can confirm. It's around about 1.21 on the clock. So operating at a 5.20 mile pace. So Nelson is actually running the right pace. The athlete's just choosing not to go with him just yet over the first lap, can, taking a more conservative approach out there today. But doing a good job is Nelson. I wonder how many laps we're gonna be able to get out of him as well, the 400 meter man. Can he, you know, take them to 800? Definitely a K. He looks fairly comfortable. He might have to have a word with his coach and bump him up to some uh, distance races in the future. Maybe an 800 meter race. But it is Claire Hammett in second place. The Thames Hare and Hound. She was my favorite before this race. Fresh off for 5,000 meter personal best is Claire. She's now being chased by the Redden AC man, James Quinn. A strong 1,500 meter PB himself. I wonder what he can do over the last few laps out here but Nelson where he's been much of the race pacing out front breezy conditions here at Ifley Road I must add however they do have a following wind down the home straight which is certainly going to help most of these athletes out there I always feel it's much better to have a following wind when you need it 
that crucial part of the race, that last 100 meters, as opposed to battling it down the home straight. So Nelson, just checking his watch. Claire Hammett looking good there as well in second. 2.39, 240 as she goes through as well. So bang on. The target was 238 for this one. At the 800 meter mark. And they are bang on and they look smooth, a lot of them. So I expect a bit of a burn up. And there's Renshaw. Xavier Renshaw, senior to the meet director, just coming through there. 259 on the clock for him. Can he dip below six minutes? Time will tell. Has he judged it well? The mile distance, very hard to judge. Uncomfortable from the off, the mile. You get 400 done and you're almost at max speed and you just have to maintain it. A real test of speed and endurance is this event. So, Nelson drops out. He gets a K done. Hammett now. Pulls clear of Quinn, the Reading man. In the red colours. The red and blue of Reading AC. And she looks to be picking it up. Like I said, they're going to have a following breeze round that bend and into the home straight. And the battle for third is really going down. We've got Claire... We've got Claire Elms and Julia Badulis, the Oxford student, studying here on a master's program. Studied over, lives in Boston as well. So she's had a good year or so to adapt to the English culture already. She looks like she wants to move up into third place and have a big last lap as they hear the sound of the bell. 4.01 on the clock. We're going to be right around 5.20. It's going to be a big dust up. Julia looks like she's got plenty of running to do. It's Claire Elms in the pink as well. 77. Can she overtake Ukua on this last lap? As they approach 300 meters to go. Belinda Dow just through as well. The Oxford, ex-Oxford captain. Phenomenal job. She's the heart and soul of this program. We're going to hear her later on the comms as well. Will we off Belinda? But there's no stopping Claire down the back straight. She looks good. She looks confident. As I said earlier, fresh off for 5,000 meter personal best, around about 17.34 for her. And that is showing the strength of the 5K. She's looked dominant over these last couple of laps. And now the wind's going to be behind her. She's going to use that as a sail down the home straight. Like I said, trains on this track week in, week out. She knows it well. And we're going to have, she is Oxford alumni, now of Thames Hare and Hounds. In the white fest. And what can Julia Badulis do over this final 100 meters as well? She looks like she wants to come into second place. It could be a 1-2 for the Oxford students. But it's all about Claire Hammett now. Still looks comfortable. And 5.16 on the clock. That's a big last lap. 5.20 as Quinn goes through. Badulis 22. Okua. Claire Elms all through inside 5.25. Phenomenal running from them. And here comes Belinda Dow with a big last 100 meters. A big battle. She wasn't going to lose out on her home track. Blood, sweat, and tears. The laps that have been run around here. 538. Good running from her. Coming back from injury as well. So, still out there. Mr. David Renshaw, Guilford, and Gottingham. A green vest. We can't miss him. 101 coming down the line now. Gary James. Good running from him. Kitted out in the sunglasses, pink vest and pink shoes. No messing around today. Renshaw, he's raised it a bit. In he comes. Good running, 6.07. Nice work from him. And there we go then. Race 4 of 13 in these open mile races. The next one, race 5, due to go off at 4.03. So just in a minute or so. And looking to catch up a little bit out there as well. Really all right here we are then race five 
up next. And we've got the trusty Tom Wood. There he is, giving us a wave to the camera. Uh, he's an Oxford Blue. Over 5,000 metres is Tom Wood. He's an experienced athlete. A Bucks man studying earth sciences here at Oxford University. I believe he's got another year to go. But I'll run you through the field then as they're just waiting the start as all this. He's been very efficient. This start is making sure they all know what lane they need to start in. If it was down to me, you'd just get them on the start lane in a way. Not like it really matters too much in a mile. They've got four laps to sort out. But they do have to jostle for start, for position here quite early on. They obviously have to go under the gantry. It is quite tight, but we must thank Sports Shoes. Phenomenal job they have done in sponsoring this event. They recognize the history that this track has. And the potential this meet has. This meet, with a bit of luck, is going to be around for future years as well. So if you're watching and you're thinking, oh, I fancy coming back next year, in touch wood, this meet will be on again. And they just want to grow it year on year on year. Phenomenal job they've done here. It's run by students, put on by students as well. So an endless task, a serious vetting process they've uh, done to make sure everyone gets in the right race so they can really chase you know, the best time they can today out here. But yeah, 168 there. We're going to have Sarah Short in this one, Clara Hattanova. So we got a lot more Oxford University students in this one as well. 144, Mara Doen. And she was just outside her 1500 PB just a little over a week ago over at Horsepath as well. Annika Schwartz, 164. Fresh off uh, 450 personal best she is, so watch out for her. She's 800 meter runner by trade, got a lethal finish. And as I said again, just being sent to do some, some strides, loosen the legs up as we just wait for the starters and the officials to get this fifth race underway. So running a little bit behind schedule here. Well, as we just wait for race five to get underway, we can see a few athletes warming up on the infield as well. You can see the stands filling up. And obviously later on, we're going to have them elite races. They're going to attack that four-minute mile. That's set to go off at 6.30. We hope the wind sets. It was a windy day. I remember Bannister reports on that train journey up from London. He reports being very concerned about the wind on a Saturday afternoon. And it's no different here today. So... And that could drop. You can see the flagpole just in the background to the top right of the screen. And you keep an eye on it. But as I said in the previous races as well, I think the athletes are fortunate in the fact that the wind will be with them down this home straight. As they line up then, there we are on the inside. Clara Hattanova, James Down next to her. Milton Keynes athlete, Guy Ward Jackson, an Oxford student. Gets involved with a bit of rowing as well. So multi-sports is Guy with the backwards cap. Mark Bell, Mitch Marshall, Sarah Schwartz in here as well. The Whitney athlete, James Curra. Annika Schwartz, 164. So these Oxford students put a lot of laps in around this track. Trained on it all season long. They've been ready for this one. Competed varsity here as well, did Annika. And uh, she's fresh off a 1500 meter personal best. Marid Owen, 144. Next to her, 188. Colin Williams, Stuart Astell, also an Oxford student. 
Number 32 is Stuart, Christopher, Finister, and Anna Anderson. I can't see on the outside, so Christopher Finister will complete the lineup. And uh, next to him, Tom Twood. Oh, Tom Wood, I do apologize. Also no, nickname Twood. The Oxford Blue. A staple. They're in good hands here. 5,000 meter man's going to take them through. And I'll just let you know, he's going to look to take them through in 2.34. So we're now talking on the cusp of that five minute barrier. Can they get near it? Can they break 5.10? 5.10, a good performance to most of these ladies. Like I said, Annika and Mared. Those two operate around about 450 for 1500. Look out for Sarah Short. Very good steeple chaser. Very good half marathon, 10K performer as well. So watch out for her, but also watch out. Right on the inside, Clara Hatsanova. I know a lot about her, 800 meter girl. So she's going to enjoy these first few laps here, Clara. But then it might bite Annika as well. Away they go then, and things started to pick up here at the Ifli Festival of Miles. Tom, Twer Tom Wood straight to the front. Like I said, 2.34, so around about 77s through 400. Don't forget, a mile, 1,609 meters, so a tad further. There they are, settling in on the back straight, and we're starting to see a common theme. The pace is almost just gapping the field. Athletes a little bit reluctant to go with them, and I think that could be down to the wind on the far side on the back straight as well. So a little bit of a lonely back straight. The crowd piling up in the stands to my left, all kind of lingering in the home straight is where they're going to get a good reception, especially if you're wearing the dark blue of Oxford out there like Clara and Annika are. They're your runners in positions three and four right now. And I believe in second place behind Wood, the pacer is James Curra, the Whitney man. And he looks like he uh, wants to get after it out here. So like I said, looking for something around about 77 on the clock. So here we go then, fraction quick. Not bad running, but they look comfortable. No complaints from the athletes. Like I said, Cara eager to follow Wood, Clara and Annika as well. No surprise to see them two up there. They are 800 meter women. So they're used to getting out hard. They are indeed. It's gonna be how they fare over laps three and four is where it's gonna really bite. And can the people a little bit further back judge their effort? Look out for Mara Doe and she's starting to move through the field. On the back straight is number 114. She eases past Sarah Short. But here we go then. Coming up to the 600 meter mark. Wood then, he's setting the pace. He is operated a fraction too quick. So he might just want to check his shoulder and help these athletes out a little bit, especially as they ease into the wind. But like I say, these Oxford students, no stranger to this track. They put in the miles round here. They put in the work. They really do those grueling distance sessions. Sessions that you have to do this time of year in order to be able to survive almost the demands of the mile. Like we say, after a lap, so often uncomfortable. Is it a real test of speed endurance? But up they come then. He's going to be well inside 234 is Wood. And that's what they wanted for this one. He's going to, there we are, 230. So Annika and Clara are pretty much bang on pace, the pair of them. 234. For 809 meters, don't forget they start just nine meters back. Mara Owen looking good, she's moving through. Following her is Sarah Short, Stuart Astell, and Guy running together. There's a nice cluster of men just keeping an eye on Hattenover and Schwartz, the two Oxford students. In well, what is second and third once the pacemaker Wood drops out? He's going to come up to that K marker. He has eased back a little bit, and they've tried to close him up. So we've got a good battle for second and third place. Sticking to their task, these athletes out here today. A breezy back straight. They're gonna enjoy the home straight as they come down it for the penultimate time. Penultimate time. But it's been James Curra. Wood now dropped out. He's gonna find himself isolated up front. And what can Clara and Annika do over this last lap? 500 meters to go then. And it's Guy Ward-Jackson who's just edging ever so closer to them as well. Dabbles in a bit of rowing, does Guy. Like I said, enjoys doing a lot of sports at Oxford University. But here we go then. The first time we've seen Annika move up into second place. She is renowned for a big finish. We saw it just 
a week or so ago at Oxford City Athletics Track when she set her 1500 meter personal best. It looks like she wants to do the same today. She wants to win this one, a real competitive nature in it. And Sarah Shaw just edged past Marit Owen as well. So this is going to be a battle over the last 300 meters. Don't go anywhere. It's still Clara out front, that gap. Although Annika's moved past Clara. It looks like Clara wants to move back by her. Back and forth, those two, as we approach that final 200 meters. It's going to be a big dust up as they now ease... And in go the rest of the field. Brilliant running from them. That was Marid Owen who just crossed the line. Just a clip outside, 5.30. What a race we had there. Goodness me. Clara and Annika did not want to separate all race long. A big dust up on the finish line. I believe Clara had to know, but she won that one. She was the victor. James Carr. Had to settle for second, just dipped on the line, and Annika as well coming into third place. That rounds out race five. No, we don't have clock. So, on to race six, and I do have the meet director, Tom Renshaw, sitting next to me, and he's just uh, just admiring the event that he's managed to put on today, but he's the critic himself is just questioning why he doesn't have a back straight clock to let those athletes know they're split at the 200 meter mark as well, but I think they're gonna be fine with a 400 meter split out here today. We also have a 1500 split as well, so you can, you know, get a 1500 personal best out here today. I know some people might prefer just to go hammer and tongs for 1500 and almost ease down the home trade and not worry about that last 100 and, and, and really use this mile opportunity to get a 1500 personal best as well. So on that, you can see the 1500 mark just a little bit round the top end there under the gazebo, but... Race six coming up then, due to go off for quarter past four, so we're just running a little late as they just, uh, we just wait for the field to take their marks, starter leading them into position, making sure no one's starting in the wrong place. But we look a li looking a little bit light on numbers in this race, maybe a few no-shows, but it doesn't look like we've got Chris Burrows of Brat 
with us. He's number 51, so we're going to be on the inside there. 146, Rihanna Patton. Now, under-20 athlete. Big talent. A part of this Oxford University program. She's just a fresher, so seeing out her final year. Going to test herself over the mile. Fresh off some big personal best this year for Rihanna. Rihanna, sorry. And a 1500 just uh, 10 days or so ago in around about 4.40, so... 4.43, I believe her time was there. So let me just check the pacing. We're going to have Tom Barrett. He's going to look to take them through in 2.30 exactly. And obviously the math, that adds up to a five-minute mile. It would be amazing to see someone dip below five minutes, I must admit. One man I think could do that is Matt Conov. 109, he's in the hat. He's in the, the Ifley Road Teddy Hall Relays hat, I believe. He did put in a shift at the famous Teddy Hall Relays, did kind of. He ran two legs, two sort of 6K legs out there. But he's going to stand a good chance to dip below five minutes for the mile. Anyway, next to him, we got Tom Proctor Leg and Daniel Zyla Fletcher as well. 171. Mike, Mike Smith in there. And number 33. Galen, Amar, Lucy Elms, and Elena Bolton is not in this one. She's going to line up in the elite race. So it's just Lucy Elms, number 76. So just the six of them in this one. Get away nice and safely. Rhiannon Patton and kind of the two Oxford students tucked straight in behind their teammate Tom Barrett. And like I said, would have put countless laps. Countless laps around this track together those two so you know 230 we're looking for around about 75 at the 400 meter split as they battle the wind on the first lap you can see the flags flying pretty stiffly it is a bit breezy here at Ifley Road but just like it was for Bannister it's almost like the weather forecast knew Bannister was attacking a four minute mile that day and it just happened to drop in that window it made it possible for him to break that four minute mark but kind of moving up onto Barrett's shoulder looks eager to move things along here does there's Matt Conover of Oxford. Like I said, he's one man I feel can threat that five-minute mark out here today. So he's looking very smooth, stride for stride. And now Tom Barrett has a difficult decision. Does he move things along and help Conover, or does he look out for the rest of the field and just ease it back? Because they're bang on. They're moving a little bit quick even. I had 73 seconds for that 409 meters. So Barrett... Deciding, making the executive decision on the spot to just move around and just decide, look, if you want to get after it, I'm going to help you. After all, they are teammates. But he was in a little bit of sticky, sticky situation, the pacemaker, and especially down the back straight is where they're going to need that help most indeed. So in the rest of the race, we've got Rhiannon Patton leaving, leading that second group. As I say that, it's Galen Amar who just... Moves up onto that, her shoulder. Doesn't want to quite move around to it. That could be a factor to the wind. And as you can see, that GB flag flying pretty strongly. Happy bank holiday weekend to you if you are just joining us out here today. But kind of on the shoulder of Barrett, just like he was a lap ago. Seems to move wide down the home straight and get that full benefit of the wind. Like I say, as you can see, the flags... you. There's a following breeze down the home straight, so you can enjoy it. If you do want to make up your time, it's the place to do it on the home straight and maybe slot in again. So through 800 meters, 225, so well inside that five-minute mark. Tom Barrett decides to pull out, but we've got a lovely little pack here as well, just coming through, led by Galen Amar. we got Michael Smith in there as well. Paul Leverton in there, a nice pack of four, and that's going to help. Rhiannon Patton try and attack that five-minute mark. It'd be brilliant to see her get under that today. The Oxford student Lucy Arms just isolated on her own. So we have Conov, a pack of four, and then Elms out the back as well. So the K marker, the K split, bang on three minutes. So that's, well, 72 second pace. So yeah, that's around about an inside a 450 mile even. And I did say he was the one to watch. Before this race was cut off, he's looking very, very good. He's going to come round for the penultimate time. 
the Ifly Festival Mars and just uh, doing a bit of celebrity spotting if you like in the crowd I've seen Dan Jarvis we're going to see him later in the elite races Elena Bolton as well and sports shoes man Chris Barnes he's done a phenomenal job in helping out and sponsoring this event like I say he recognized the opportunity sports shoes a very big brand had here and actually the CEO of sports shoes and Brett Bannister himself no relation to Roger Bannister but a little bit ironic that they do share the same surname. And look, as I say, that Rihanna Patton moves through. 3.52 on the clock. So she's going to have to go some if she wants to run inside five minutes. She might just be a clip outside. But she's now going to have to do the work all on herself on this last lap. I think things did slow a little bit um, for that pack of four during laps two and three. And that is the crucial part of a mile race. It is laps two and three. And someone who has mastered that and knows that and executed that just perfectly is Kunov himself and he's got less than 200 meters to run has Matt the Oxford man does a phenomenal job here putting a lot of work around this track and a great racer as well a great trainer very disciplined in training himself and now he comes down the home straight he's gonna hear the crowd clap and cheer him home bring him home he's gonna enjoy this one's 109 Matt Kionov, he's going to be, I think he's going to be ever so close to 450 for the mile. 449, 450, he's pretty much on the nose. And uh, look, a big race for second and third. Then we're going to have Mike Smith. That's a big finish from him. 114 as well. Paul Leverton coming in for third. Galen Eimer and Patton's just going to hang on in there. She's going to do her best. 507 on the clock. So just outside. Five minutes for her. And of course, these Oxford students having a heavy exam period out there as well. Here comes Lucy Elms to round off race six of 13. So we're just under, well, the next one's going to see us at halfway here at Ifley Road in these open mile races. And brilliant running from all of these athletes battling some pretty stiff, windy conditions out there, I must add. But atmosphere building, sun is shining at least. It looked doubtful this morning. Yeah, these athletes would have woken up, checked their window, and seen a lot of rain out there. We're good running, so let's have a look and see who we're going to have in race 7 of 13. And of course, those two elite races later. The legendary Ifley Road. Home of the very first, the world's first sub four minute mile. They thought it was impossible. So we should have in this one, David Williams. I can see him. I can see him, the South London Harrier there in the white and maroon stripe. So David Williams, Richard Davidson, Oliver Sherratt. Colin Ridley, Andrew Caldrill, Andy Waterman, Matt Davies, Charlie Bell. Thomas Dewey, Alistair Richards, and Matt Brown in this one. As they look to line up. So we've got a mixture of ages, mixture of sizes. So here we go then, just waiting for the starters orders. It's Williams, Davidson, and next to him, that's Sherritt, Ollie Sherritt of Abingdon. Can't miss him a few. Oh, he's looking good. He's looking up for it. Here's Sherritt, I must admit. Colin Ridley out there as well. And 161. We haven't got Andrew Caldrell in this, so the next one we're going to see is Matt Davies. I believe he's uh, running for Reading Roadrunners as well. Charlie Bell. Number 41, City of Salisbury athlete, Tom Dewey. And he's going to complete the lineup is Tom Dewey as well. So a few uh, no-shows 
in this one as well. Athletes do turn up. They do tend to juggle events as well. We have, we've had a few move up and move down in races. Just uh, like I said, they do a phenomenal job in kind of vetting the athletes here just to make sure everyone's in the right race. But sometimes you can never know what shape an athlete is in. Sometimes athletes turn up and they know they've been training well. They just haven't raced. So they're demanding to be in races, you know, quicker races in order to make sure they can run a personal best or even slower races as well. Sometimes athletes have come off a little niggle, might be suffering some illness and they just know they're not quite in the shape they once were. So better to be competitive than kind of get left behind out there as well. So flags flying high here at Ifley Road. Race seven about to get underway. Half four. Is the time. Twood's going to look to pace this. Tom Wood's going to look to pace this in 2.28 at 800. So comfortably inside five-minute mile. The last race was bang on the nose. Matt kind of won that in 4.50. What can they do today then? Twood, he's going to have to work a little bit harder to get to the front of this one. Does move wide. And just so those athletes get a nice clear run. And there we go. So, 100 meters are done, and it was the man. God, he did look good on the start line, did Oliver Sherratt of Abingdon, but he's right on the heels of Tom Wood. He's not going to give him an inch. And smart move, considering how windy it is on the back straight. You want to be tucked right in behind the pacemaker, and he's doing just that. And if you can't tell already, sports shoes flags flying high here. The Ifley Festival of Miles, honored to have sports shoes on board, the sponsor. Uh, the UK's number one running retailer, running website, even do some phenomenal offers as well on there as well. So do check them out to get your running shoes, running spikes as well, and even apparel as well. And just like Kunov in the previous heat, it looks like Oli Sherratt wants to get things moving pretty swiftly here as he comes on the shoulder of Twid. And he's going to make Twid work hard. Wow, well inside. Goodness me. 67 on the clock for 409 meters. They wanted to go through in 208. Uh, 228, I do apologize, the whole field well inside that base, 228 of course would be 74, and it looked like the whole field kind of threw in around about 70 seconds even, so it's going to be a, a long way for these gentlemen if they're going to set that early pace, it's going to make it very hard for them over the next couple of laps we said earlier in the stream that the key laps in a mile, a lap 2 and 3 they really are, you know, it's so easy to fall asleep on laps 203, uh, 2 and 3, and that's where you lose the time. And, you know, everyone can kick that last 100 meters. But, you know, if you've wasted too much time and you've kind of got a little bit lazy and switched off those middle laps, you can't make too much up on the last lap. But Sherratt looking very good on the hills of Wood. The Oxford man, the Oxford blue over 5,000 meters. And just bunching up a little bit behind them, as you can see, just crowning the bend there. The crew bunching up behind, that does include Charlie Bell, Matt Davies, Colin Ridley, Rich Davidson and Williams as well. So 217, 218, so slowed a little bit, had them about 66, so it's 72, so, which is kind of where they want to be anyway. But there we go, then here come the pack through the line as well. They're pretty much bang on 228, so they've judged their effort and gauged it, gauged it pretty well. As well, have those. So just these back off in the way, you know, you'll go through the first 400, you'll check the clock. You'll think, goodness, that's a lot quicker than I need to be going if, you, if your body can't tell you that already. But Wood just moving clear and you can see how strong the breeze is on the back straight as he's working into that. The vest kind of acting as a sail almost. But Sherratt now moving through 600 meters to go. The Abingdon man, he's led from gun to tape so far. He had the help of Wood, the pacer, but he's going to have to do this last 600 alone. He approaches that 500 mark, and as you can see, the gazebo there where that van is on the top end, that's the 1500 split. So they get your 1500 split here as well. So athletes, check out the results, live results on open track. So be sure to keep an eye on those and check the feed if any friends and family watching these. But Sherrod looks good. He's got a good style out there, has he? Good knee lift, good use of the arms. It's going to get tough over this last lap, 3.35. So he's slowed again, but he's looking good. They're going to be well inside five minutes. He, he would have to really, the wheels would really have to come off if he wasn't to dip below five. He may have a battle on his hands. Williams in second. Looks like he's full of running, I must admit. So the field all through in 3.45 on the bell. So 300 meters to go in this one. 
You are watching the Ifli Festival of Mars. Don't go anywhere. We've got plenty more races to come. Six more open mile races, and it is Williams who is closing up. And would you look at that? Sherrett set a very, very quick early pace, and he's looking like he might pay for it. Can he respond? The Salisbury athlete as well looks to be moving around him. That's Rich Davidson. Young Rich Davidson. So Williams and Davidson now into, into first and second. And it looks like Davidson may have even judged it better than Williams. It's going to be a huge last lap from him. He was third at the bell. He's working through. He looks full of running in this final home straight. Does Davidson coming down. Crowd on their feet. Clapping him in. Phenomenal. A world judge. Evan. Look out for Charlie Bell. He's going to move up into second. That's a huge last lap. 455. Phenomenal from those guys. All inside five minutes. Five minutes on the clock now. And the whole field is just, what, four or five seconds apart. That is brilliant running. It really is. And wow, i got to admit, I thought Davidson had a good finish. But Bell, coming from way back in around about fifth or sixth place even. Huge last lap for him. Like I said, they got a nice following breeze on the home straight to really... Uh, Enjoy and maximize that sprint finish. So great work. The wind, may I add, is dropping a little bit. So just like when Bannister ran 359 for the mile 50 or so years ago, the wind is, you know, eased down gradually throughout the day. It looks to be doing a similar thing here. Saturday the 4th of June on your bank holiday weekend. That's race seven done and dusted. What a race it does. it was indeed. Just showing you the strength and depth here. We've had some phenomenal entries over just under 200 entries. Or so interested in running the mile. And can you blame them on this legendary track here at Ifley Road? So here we go then as the camera pans across to race eight just lining up. That's going to be paced by Sam Nelson. Sam Ledley there, number 113. Oxford student. Sports the headband. I'm not sure he uh, takes that headband off, I must admit. Well known, it's almost his uh, his trademark. You know it's Sam Ledley, can't get him mistaken when he's got the headband on. But anyway, the rest of the field, Reese Dunn, Russ Ashford in this as well, Connor McKirk, Adrian Henry, Christopher Westcott, Elias Easterbrook, Eric Klakowski, Josh Mully, Cormac Malone, Adrian Lewis, Neil Pennell, Pennell in this as well, Oxford City Man, 149. So as they look to line up, we've got Oxford Brooks student in this as well. 136, Josh Mully of Oxford Brooks. So he's just waiting for the starters' orders in order to get on the start line. And here we are, Sam Lelly. A little slap at the quads just to make sure everything firing. Athletes just nice and relaxed before the mile. They know what's to come. Pain. The four-lap dash as they so famously called it back in the day. They know what's ahead of them. They would have trained for this many a many speed endurance workout. As they uh, line up.
Right then, race eight. Waiting for that starter's gun. You can see Reese Dunn on the inside, number 69. Sporting a Mississippi State vest is done and split shorts as well. So I would suggest he was out there studying very, you know, American Division I school. So, you know, keep an eye on him. Russ Ashford looks to not be starting this one. So we're going to have Sam Ledley is the man next to him. Like I said, Sam, you can't miss him in the bandana. In the headband, actually. Not quite a bandana. Next to him, Conor McKirk. Eric Klikowski, Adrian Hemery, Chris Westcott. And I'll complete the rest of the lineup once we get away safely here. And away they go then. Nelson, two to four. He's going to take them through this race. Well, we've already had our first sub five minute clocking of the day. And throughout the afternoon now, we're going to edge ever so closer to... Possibly a sub four clock in as well. So every race getting quicker from here on out. Nelson leads the way. Ledley slots in behind him nicely. And this one just, that's what you want in a mile race. You don't want too much pushing, too much shoving. You're running at pretty much that optimum speed for four laps. You don't want any energy wasted out there. It's very hard to maintain this pace, let alone if you're sort of pushing and shoving one another and speeding up, slowing down. So... Nelson takes them out. They all slot in behind in a nice single file formation, which is just perfect. You know, a breezy day, but the, the wind is dropping. You'll be pleased to know the wind is dropping. So when we're referring to that sub four attempt later tonight, it's looking good. It's looking promising. Okay, so here they come. Going to be inside 70 seconds, 66, 67 for that first 400 meters. Don't forget 409 meters that first lap. 1,609 meters the mile as well. So we got Ledley in behind him. That's 105, Eric. Klikowski, the Abingdon man. Abingdon AC, nice local club. Always supporting, you know, local events. God, they've come in their numbers today, I must tell you. A fair few of them out there. So nice. This, this is perfect. And, you know, if you're anyone in this pack, in that, you know, top five or six, you just got to tell yourself, look, just hang on, hang on in there and just follow the man in front and no gaps because the minute someone gets detached, that's when it gets difficult to maintain that pace and hold form over the remainder of this mile distance. And they're going to come up to halfway then. These athletes, Nelson doing a terrific job up front. He was looking for a halfway split of 2.22. I think he's going to be on course for that. They're inside 70, well inside 70 seconds over that first lap. So it's kind of a theme here at Ifley Road this afternoon is a, is a pretty, pretty swift first lap, but so often the way Bannister himself went through in 58, settled and then closed a little bit. So 2.22, bang on the nose. So they have slowed a little bit. They've got to keep this pace going. And Ledley, it looks like he just wants to hang on to the coattails. And Nelson, of course, this is going to be the last lap he's going to have with Nelson. They're getting them to a K, these pacemakers. So they're doing a terrific job on that front here at the Ifley Festival of Miles. Every single race is paced and ensuring that athletes have a good opportunity to really hunt down any personal bests as well. Talking of personal bests, we've got a 1,500 meter split out here. So not only do you get a mile personal best, you get a 1,500 personal best as well, season's best, whatever it may be. So things just starting to bunch up. Now, Ledley still at the front. And that could be Cormac Malone. I'm going to try and identify the man in the orange vest when he comes round. But it is Reese Dunn hanging on in there. The, the Mississippi State man, like I said, American NCAA Division I college. So he's going to be an experienced miner. Anyone who runs for them has got to be taken seriously. Moving into the front now. Let's just identify it. Well, number 164. Number 184, Christopher Westcott. And he looks good in the shades, in the calf socks. He's going to hear the bell. 3.37 on the bell. So these guys are on for a big one. It's going to be a dust up. You know, if they can hit 70 seconds, they're going to be inside 4.50. 2.22 there. We're looking for anything around about 4.45. So what can Westcott do over this last lap? As the remainder of the field, they're all through now, all onto their final lap. Westcott looks good. Dunn is going to give chase. Look out for Ledley. We've seen him train on this track week in, week out. He is partial to a big finish. He's got a real turn of pace when he wants to. 
There's Ledley. He's got the strength in there from a, from a 10K personal best a few weeks ago here at Town & Gown. And it's all going to be changed over this five final 200. The Abingdon man's now getting involved. Eric Klikowski. Look at that for a, for a turn of pace, for a change of pace. He's put 10 meters on the field in the space of about 20. And he looks very good as he's going to come down the home straight now. He's got 20 meters on these guys. He's surely not going to give that lead up. Is Klikowski, the Abingdon man. As I say that, Ledley's going to give chase. Westcote is going to follow. But here comes Klikowski. Phenomenal run from him. 4.44. So very even done. Ledley in 46.47. The rest of the boys inside 4.50. The Oxford Brooks man there. Good running from him as well. Josh Mully that will be. 71 just coming across. Elias Easterbrook. Phenomenal. And for many of these, this is their debut over the mile distance as well. Obviously, you know, not very common to have a mile in the UK these days. The, the 1500, the much more popular, you know, middle distance event. The metric mile, of course, so much more commonly run in the UK. But there we go. That wraps up race eight then. Obviously, live results on Open Track as well. So be sure anyone of interest in that race that you were watching, check out the live results on open track it will be on there along with their 1500 meter split so we are starting to get near the business ends now that's eight of 13 open mile races the next one race nine things starting to hot up we're going to start operating around about four inside 440 hopefully this one can go All right, then, here we go. Race 9 of 13, just lining up there, just waiting for the, the starters' orders, deciding what lane they're going to be allowed to go in. The officials here doing a great job. We've got to thank everyone involved in the setup of this meeting. You know, we've had nine races already. We've got a few more to come, Four, five more to come then, plus the two elite races, so seven in total. And right, It's going to take you right up until half past six course phenomenal job done here we've got by the oxford university students putting on this event and it's going to be an event for the future as well watch it grow year on year you won't want to miss it and as you can see they've already attracted the sponsor of sports shoes the uk leading leading retailer across the uk so you can see the stature of this meet already and expect it to grow year on year like i say so let's run you through the lineup in this one we got Connor Morgan of Abingdon. Sam Bayliss in there as well. Next to him is number 38 in the black and green. 87, Adrian Haynes. Alex O'Neill. Paul Jolliffe of Brat. David Moyes, the Hearn Hill man. There he is in the red and black. Red and black hooped vest of Hearn Hill. And watch out for him. He's in good shape, training very well at the moment. Next to him, Charlie McMillan as well. The Gateshead Harrier, Oxford student. Both of those Oxford students. Ethan Wright as well in the Azix singlet there. You can see him actually. He's uh, in lane two there. I think he's going to have to move if my uh, start lists are correct. And yes, there we are. So start. Started just making sure. And I hope the starter knows that they've got to move forward a little bit because uh, that is not the mile start. The mile start is a little bit further up. So hopefully they, they know that. I think he's just uh, making sure they start back from the line. But yeah, let me continue with the start list. Ethan Wright, Jonathan Job, Will Christoffi. 
in here as well. Number 54, Will Christoffi. I can't actually see him, so doesn't look to be in this race. Mark Ince and Peter Wright as well. Tom Barrett going to pace this one. We've seen him several times already this afternoon, have we? Tom Barrett, he's going to be pacing this one. He's <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Away they go in nice and safely. I do apologise. Any technical, uh, any t the audio dropping in and out. So I do apologise for that. But look, all our attention turns to race nine of thirteen out here. Saturday, the fourth of June. You are watching the Ifley Festival of Miles, and straight to the front we can see Tom Barrett. He is the pacemaker, the Oxford University student. He's wearing the dark blue. You can always spot an Oxford student in that dark blue. You can see you're joining us on quite a breezy Saturday afternoon as well. But I've run you through the lineup already. But it looks like that's Connor Morgan. A slight figure of Connor Morgan leading the way as I say that. Commentator's curse. David Moyes just pulls around him and looks to slot in behind Barrett. And these guys want to operate around about 70 second pace. They want to kind of, if they can run 440 or possibly even break 440, that's going to be really, really good running for these guys. Going to be some big PBs in there if they can do that. So what are they going to hit through in? There's the mile marker, 68-69. That's good pacing from Barrett up front. They're going to be happy with that because, you know, I do think in a mile you want to go through a fractionally, make a little bit of time up on that first lap, settle, keep it controlled, and then kind of really work the back end of the race. That last 600, 400 meters in a mile race is crucial. It really is. But you can't afford, saying that you can't afford to slow down too much over four laps of the track. But things looking good then. Things are strung out in this one. And that's just what you want in this race. You don't want to be changing position, chopping stride at all. So 144 over there, 145. So 145 will be bang on 70 second pace. They're on pace for 440 is this group. And I said Moyes uh, was the one to watch before this race. He's got a very rangy style, the tall figure, an Oxford student. Got a few more years of studies here as well. So down they come then. Things looking good. Barrett's going to drift out. 219, 220 at 800. Bang on pace from Tom Barrett, I must add. Moyes, 102 behind him though. Stalking him is Jonathan Job. There we are. That's the name for you. Jonathan Job just keeping, you know, five meters or so on the back. Ethan White in there as well. Look out for him. He knows how to judge an effort. However, you know, a bit of background on him. He's fresh off a 245 Edinburgh Marathon just last weekend. So I'm sure he's feeling that in his legs a little bit out there today. But one thing a marathoner does have, and that's strength. So it'd be interesting to see what he can do over the last 600 meters or so in this race. He's in fourth place and he looks to be moving up. You know, touching on to third place as well. So he's got he's got a good few targets ahead of him. And, you know, in racing, it's always good when you've got people to aim at, people to work at and kind of close that gap. It keeps you honest throughout the race. As I talk about honesty, Moyes at the front doing some very good work, just pushing on, and he's made sure that third lap has stayed strong. 3.30 would mean 4.40 pace at the bell. It looks like they're going to be on for that. 
Let's go, Dave. What can you do over this last 400, 330? This has been a terrific run. Evenly paced the whole way. Ethan White there going to pull round 142. Alexander O'Neill in the t-shirt. Those two are going to have a good battle. White looks like he wants to, to move on as well. Jonathan Job in second. These boys are going to rally now. They're going to come into the wind. As we can see, the flags are blowing hard here at Ifley Road. It's a windy back straight. So that's where it's going to really get hard and bite. But once you're through it, you can really kind of open up in that last 200 meters or so. So Moy still leading the way. The race hasn't changed too much at all. Jonathan Job in second, but that gap, it hasn't grown. And Jonathan Job, is he going to get a second wind and almost get that confidence you get from closing the gap and pulling around someone? What's moy has got left? Over this final 150 meters, he is an Oxford student. He's trained on this track week in, week out, all year long. He won't want to lose this one. His friends, his family are going to be in the crowd. What can Moyes do over the last 100? He goes to the arms. It's Job next to him as well. But here goes Moyes. Is he going to hold him off? Not quite. Job is going to come past him. He's perfectly executed race from Jonathan Job. Terrific run inside 440. Moyes as well. Ethan White comes through as well. O'Neill. Those boys all around about 440. Fantastic running indeed. What an effort. Charlie McMillan there, the gate set man. He's inside 450. And he's going to be happy with that as well. Oxford student. Believe he a little bit of inside info. I think he had his last exam yesterday as well. So I think he's probably uh, battling with some celebrations last night is Charlie McMillan. So look, terrific run. And you can see what that mile does to them. It really takes it out of you. A real test of speed endurance. So well done for all of those athletes. And now we're into double figures of the races. Race 10 up next. All right, then into double figures here. Slight pause in the program, I guess. In between races, a good sort of five-minute rest or so. So grab yourself a cup of tea, but make sure you're back in time. This one due to go off at 5.03. So we've actually caught up on time. We were running a little bit behind, but now we're back on schedule. So I can't expect this one will go off before 5.03. So you've got five minutes or so. Yep, grab a cup of 
grab a cuppa, a couple biscuits, settle down for the evening now because we've got 90 minutes of some really good mile races coming up, things hotting up here at it. <laughs> Like I say, this is the first one, the first Ifley Festival of Miles in a, in a little while and expect it to, uh, to stick around, expect to see it year on year on year. Now they want to grow this event and they've done a phenomenal job putting this first event on already, I must add, run by Oxford University students. They wanted to give the opportunity to people in the community, their own students and of course elites to really attack that mile distance, which doesn't get you know, raced often enough for my liking in the UK, obviously, big fans of the metric mile, the 1500 as well. So, as we look at these athletes on the start, like Matt, Matt Locke, 118 next to him, 117, Ben Lyons, number 100. How about that, number 100? Alex Jackson, Oxford student, 94. Lewis Hudson, Jack McVan in there next to him. Birmingham student, 119. George Loxon, not sure how... Well, that vest is going to go down here at the Ifley Road. Home to Oxford University as well, this track. Talking of Oxford University, we got Jerker in there. The Oxford man, there he is, 108. That's him. Rich Weaver next to him. Number 183. Avenue man, Harry Richards, also in there, 159. 55. Jamie Cooper. And next to him, we got Harrison Main as well. On the outside then, Tom Renshaw. And that man there in the blue Oxford vest is the meat director. He's put the meat on and he just can't help himself but get involved in some of the action as well. So he's going to pace this race. And uh, well, let's just have a double check. Let's look. 215 at 800. So things, like we say, starting to hot up. This is, you know, around about 430 mile pace. And that previous race was inside 440 for the mile. So things hotting up. Well, away they go then. And there he is, the meet director, Tom Renshaw, having to really work. A little bit of argy-bargy, and you're probably going to see that as the races progress. As athletes, you know, as they get a bit quicker, they do tend to jostle for position. And they, you know, they also get out a little bit harder as well. And, you know, this is quite a deep field, actually. And there's quite a few of them in there. It is quite a tight, uh, you know, they've got a gantry here over the start and finish area. Which is quite tight. It is quite a sharp cut in. But Renshaw, no messing about. Looks a little bit excited. And it's quite a quick first 200 meters or so indeed. And you know, it doesn't look to be many going with him. One field pretty reluctant to go with him at this stage. It looks like that is Jamie Cooper, who is uh, Jamie Cooper, number 55 in the black, who's in second place. He's the one who's going to follow Renshaw through this first lap. 215, so 60, 66, 67. 67 mids, sorry, is going to be plenty quick enough. And they're well inside that, 64, 65. So the whole field almost through in 67. The rest of the field, right where probably Jackson is, number 100, is where you want to be really in this one. Just tucking yourself in. You know, sort of mid-pack, let the field do the work. You don't want to get isolated in a mile. It's very hard to maintain top pace when you're not drafting. You haven't got someone in front of you to focus. You know, an athlete who can front run. A quick time over the mile is what you, you got to take that seriously. So, things stringing out. I wonder if that pack are going to just edge closer and two is going to become seven. Five guys in that second pack and we've got a nice single file train now. Seven hundred meters run. They're going to come up to halfway. Two fifteen is what they wanted for this one. Be terrific running if anyone can break four thirty in this race. We can see the flags flying pretty, pretty hard out here. It is quite a breezy day here at Ifley Road, but the lead's going to change again. Cooper is going to move round. Harrison Main, who would, did lead earlier, so pretty much bang on on the clock as well. And it was, you know, Jamie Cooper who did look. He did want to get after it early as well. 
Him and Main, especially those two, have chopped and changed the lead so far. But that's that's a good pack of well, six or seven athletes in there. I can't, I count seven athletes in there, so it's going to be pretty hard to call. Alex Jackson, the Oxford man, just hanging on in the back, back as well. we got the Swindon athlete, Ben Lyons, in there, and it's just starting to bunch, and there's no doubt it's bunching. As I've been echoing all afternoon long, the back straight is ever so breezy, so do expect it to bunch up a little bit out there. And just a bit of pushing and shoving as well as they want to jostle for position. You want to position yourself in a place where you can attack over the last lap. You don't want to be out front and kind of someone to shot at. As I said, that is Ben Lyons, a Swindon Harrier, who's going to move himself out front and move things along is Ben Lyons. Looks good. 127 as well. Can't miss him in the red half tights. That's Jack McVan. Of Hillingdon, the Hillingdon man. So Lions leading the way. 328 at the bell. So they're going to be inside 440. 430 might be a stretch. They're going to have to really close up if they're going to get near that. But let's see how this last lap plays out. And it's Main again. He led early and he's back in the front. He's going to work it now. Turn on the afterburners on the, with 300 meters to go. Lions is not giving up though as the gap's just starting to form. That's Jackson of Oxford just hanging on in there as well. And Locke is up there. These guys have not been separated all race long. It's going to be a dust up over this final 200. What can Main hold them off? Lines in there as I say that. Jackson, McVan. All of rest. You could throw a blanket over this field right now. They're going to come through. This is going to be their 1500 split. So look, around about 416, 417 on the clock through the 1500. So that gives you a rough indication of what pace they're running. 68 seconds. They wanted around about 67 seconds. And look at this. It's a blanket field. We're out into lane three. It's the Birmingham man. He's going to come spoil the party. George Lockstone. Can he hold off Jackson? He will. Phenomenal running. 4.35. And that was a big dust up. Jackson almost kicking himself. Did he leave it too late? But he looks pretty happy with that. Jamie Cooper as well. Our early leader just crossing the line now. What a race. And that was a race. And that's the mile for you. It really is. You know, that's a competitive mile at its best. And they all look chuffed out there. They're all strewn over the floor at the moment. There we go. Well, that sees us at race 10 now. Race 11, of course, up next. So we've got three more to go then of these open mile races. And they just seem to be getting more and more competitive as they go.
Okay, welcome back. Little break there in between races. Like I say, enough to grab a refreshment. But who have we got in this one? On the inside, that's Hanos Vranek. On the inside, the, the Oxford City man again is, is going to be next to him. Duncan Lawrence there. 129 as well. We've got Adam Milbury. I think this, the start is going to come and uh, adjust all their positions because they're a bit of a muddle at the moment. Cambridge man, 152. Mike Pointing. Look out for him. We've got Jared Martin, Will Shardlow. The two Oxford lads there as well. Big smile on their face. Home crowd. Lots of friends and family are out here supporting them as well. I think that's Will's just smiling to them. Rocking the uh, the backwards cap. There's Will Shardlow. He's a uh, 415, 1500 meter man. So, and let's have a look. They've got the, the trusty Tom Wood pacing them as well. He's going to try and take them through in 214. So, yeah, bang on the nose, 67. So, we hope to see a sub 430 clocking. Our first of the day, man, I'd it would be. So, Hallamshire man as well. 116, David Lewis. The Hallamshire man rocking that nice red vest. So as they wait, the starters' orders through these gentlemen. We can see the other races as well. Just warming up on the infield. It's brilliant. Ensures we keep people in the facility, keep the atmosphere good here at Ifley Road. And to the left, the, the stand absolutely ram-packed. So lots of noise on the home straight for these athletes, especially those Oxford students in the dark blue. Here we go then. As they look to get underway, away they go safely then. Wood's going to have to find his way to the front. Pulls wide around the bend. He's going to need to cut in a little bit. There we go. Jostle for position. Will Shardlow gets out nice and strong. As Will looks like he wants to just let... I believe that's 1-2-2. Two, two. Jared Martin in there as well. Mark Pointing, Dave Lewis. So, nice bunch. It's probably the most bunch we've seen to start go off at, actually. The whole field all together at this stage. And this looks much more controlled than the previous heat, which is good. You want an even pace. If you go off too quick, you're just going to get that lactic building in their legs. And it's really going to hurt over the latter stages of the mile. It's going to hurt anyway. But, yeah, you, you sometimes set yourself up for failure should you go out too hard. As I say that, Wood wants to almost gap the field a little bit and just drifts away slowly. And uh, they seem reluctant. It looks like this one's going to be a bit cagey. Often you find that as the races get quicker... You know, the races do tend to get a little bit cagey. A 129, that is. So it's Adam Milbury up there leading the way. Will Shardlow on his shoulder. Looks to move around. Looks strong. 68 at the clock there. Mark Pointing as well, the Cambridge man. So it's Oxford and Cambridge side by side through the 400 meter mark. There you go. I don't need to tell you about that rivalry. Light blue v dark blue. And so it would be handy from, a, from an Oxford perspective if Pointing did just drift by Shardlow because he's going to carry him through the back straight into the wind. And he's just going to bridge that gap between Tom Wood as well. So 600 meters done. 1,000 meters to go. And the pack just queuing behind. So the two out front, almost isolated a little bit. It's almost like in cycling you could call that pack the peloton. And Dave Lewis in there, the Hallamshire man in the red I can see. And that might be Arthur Peel just uh, just peeling away from the pack himself. He's going to look to bridge that gap to the front too. I believe it is indeed Arthur Peel. So, pointing right in behind Wood as they come up. They want it around about 68, which would be 214. They're on pace. Shardlow looking good. He's through in about 215, 216. It's going to have to be a big couple last laps. For these gentlemen to break 4.30. Jared Martin hanging on in there. Watch out for him. He's a, a bit of a mountain runner. A bit of a fell man. But he's going to have the strength over these last couple laps. I can tell you that. So, you know, expect him to really come to the fore. 
He's just tracking the Oxford City athlete as well. So Peel just moving around Shardlow. Shardlow, he's going to have to work with him if he wants to stand a chance of breaking that 430 mark. But pointing now on his own, the Cambridge man, as Wood drops out the pacer. Pointing is going to come round for the penultimate time. He's going to have about 30 meters on these guys. But it's going to be an interesting battle for third place, I must admit. Look at them, four of them queuing up. And this is where you start to just, you know, almost forget about times. And you start to think, well, how, you know, can I get second? Can I get third? And judging your effort over the course of that last lap. Someone who's judged their effort very well, though, is pointing. He's going to hear the bell. That's going to be a nice sound for him. 3.21 on the clock. He's on for sub 4.30, people. He should get inside it. Can he hold it together on this last lap? Shardlow, Peel. Lewis there as well. Vranek, the man in blue. He's sitting in third place. Those are your four fighting for those minor medal positions. No medals, of course, offered here. Just fresh, shiny, personal best. But look, 300 meters to run now. Mark Pointing still leading the way like he's done for the past three laps. He had a fairly conservative start. Edged his way up. Found himself in behind Tom Wood, the pacer, and he's stayed honest till then. And look at that. Hanos Vranik is moving through, and this is going to be a big last 200 from him. Peel can't live with his pace, but the Hampshire man as well. Dave Lewis is going to come strong, and this is what it's about in the mile. What do you have left in this final 100 meters? The wind is on their backs now. And look at Vranik. This has been a ridiculous last 100 meters or so. He's going to come through for the win. Pointing, tying up. Almost running through Treacle. Vranek comes through. 428, 429 on the clock. Brilliant running. Lewis. Shardlow as well. Near enough, his personal best. Phenomenal. What a run from those gentlemen out there today. Here comes Martin as well. 441. He's got to be happy with that. He's been racing on the on the fells as well recently. So good running from him. Well done to all of those gentlemen. What a burn up over that last 200. Expect to see more of the same as the meet progresses and we head into these final two open mile races. Those men have got to be proud with those performances and I think a lot of them have been rewarded with big, big PBs as well. A lot of happy faces out there if they can smile through the fatigue, through the lactic. So up next... Two more to go in these open races. Up next will be race 12. And that, we hope to be inside 420 even. It has a target of around about 415, that one. So, things hotting up big time. So, if you want to grab a refreshment, grab a cup of tea or so, the next race due to go off at 5.27, so just a clip under 10 minutes or so. And as I was saying earlier, that race targeted at 4.16 for the mile, so things really starting to hotten up. But yes, you've got, you've got eight minutes until that one is going to get underway. So relax, get comfortable, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Well, welcome back. Cameraman enjoying himself, just panning to some of the crowd, some of the important figures who have put this meet on. I believe you just had eyes on Belinda Dow, ex Oxford University captain. She's played such a crucial role in, in this team, developing such a team it is at Oxford. Such a team it is. There's Tom Barrett. He's going to be pacing, just squatting down for us nicely. Thanks for that, Barrett. As we uh, await race 12 now. Two more open races to go. And this is going to be 12 of 13, like I say. Simon Dill, Brad Burke. Of course, the last time Brad raced on this track, he won the varsity match in the steeplechase. There he is in the backwards cap, the white vest, the Horsham Blue Star. So famously known. Wearing number 50, yes. Won the varsity match in 909, steeplechase personal best. So he's going to be one to watch in this race. We've got Joe Bowness as well in here. Johnny Cornish, Matt Barrington, 42. Fresh off a big, big uh, 10,000 meter PB actually at the Highgate Knight of 10K. So we hope he's recovered from that. Um, it was a few weeks ago now. Tom Renshaw, 157. That is your meet director, ladies and gentlemen. Number 157 in the older shot vest. We can't see him. There he is just peeking around behind Tom Barrett. He's done a terrific job in putting this meet on and attracting sponsors such as SportsShoes.com, the UK's number one retailer. And of course, he's got the officials and he hasn't done it alone. The pacemaker next to him, Tom Barrett there as well, has also been a pivotal, played a pivotal part in attracting the elite field and sourcing that elite field together, to be honest. So he has done very well on that side of things. Has... Mr. Tom Barrett and Renshaw as well. So Dave Lawrence in this as well, Brody Denno. I've already mentioned Joe Bowness. Tom Bird, who I can't see in this one. Um, we've also got Aiden Smith, the Hallamshire man. Rocking that nice red vest. So quite quite a collection of athletes down here from Hallamshire. Uh, there is there is Brad just uh, sharing a few words with his friends and family watching this one. As the wind blows on, I was hoping it would ease down slightly, but it hasn't yet. Here at Ifley Road, we've still got time. We've just got an hour or so until that elite men's race where they are going to target sub four. So that is Simon Deal of Swindon on the inside. Thomas there from Crawley doesn't line up. So we're going to have Brad Burke and Aiden Smith next to them. Toby Rowe also doesn't line up, so it's Dave Lawrence. And then we've got Next to him, Joe Bowness in there. Johnny Cornish. No sign of Tom Bird either. So we've got Barrington, Renshaw. And on the outside, number 73, Joe Edwards, also an Oxford University student. So a collection of Oxford students in this one. This is going to be sort of university bragging rights. Who's the quickest miler in the group? <laughs> if the audio just cut out there but yeah if you're just joining us there will be a 1500 split here today as well as a mile split of course because it is the mile distance but Barrett to the front stretching out perfect single file formation out there there's Tom Barrett the pacemaker from Oxford Johnny Cornish I can see the Wimbledon man he sits in second Joe Edwards he knows how to get out hard on this track phenomenal trainer is Joe Edwards what can he do can he prove, can he test that fitness today? Slotting in behind him as well as the Swindon man. That's Simon Dill. Tom Renshaw in there. Matt Barrington, the 10K man. Inside 32 minutes for 10K Barrington. Brad Burke as well with the backwards cap. Varsity steeplechase champion against Cambridge. So looking good. A nice back of them. A very, very competitive race on deck here. Edwards just trying to bridge that gap. 
We know that we know where the wind is. If you're watching us, it's on the back straight. So they're fighting it now as they you can see they go in a single file and it bunches up a little bit down the home straight because that's where they have the wind on their backs. Joe Bowness moving up as well. And it's quick. It's pretty much bang on pace. I had 136, 137 is 600. That is 64 second pace. So they're operating at a final clip, 416. And if we can get below that, there's going to be a few sub four minute, 1500 meter men as well. There's the split up there. So they're going to hit that in a couple laps. But first up, they've got to get through halfway in this men's mile. Race 12 of 13. Cornish, Edwards, Barrington, Bowness, Renshaw, Burke and Dill. Those are your early leaders. 2.11. So it has slowed a little bit for these gentlemen. They're going to have to go some over the next two laps to ensure they get inside that 416. It would have to be a big last 800 to do that. So maybe sub 420 is more realistic out there. As they battle the conditions. But Cornish looks good. He's been... He's out front where he's been all race long. Edwards as well. In fact, from the start, has pretty much had to give chase. Can't quite get on him. Can he drag the pack back? If he can, I fear it's going to be a big last 600 for most of these guys out there today. If he can get, if he can, if they can get on the back of Cornish, sorry. But here they come then, down for the penultimate time. Cornish, Edwards, Barrington, and Bowness is in there. Renshaw as well, your meet director in the red. Let's get behind him. If you're at home, he's done a phenomenal job in putting this meet on, along with several Oxford University students at the Ifley Festival of Miles. That is what you're watching, and you're watching Jonathan Cornish, number 56, the Hercules Wimbledon man. Come up to the bell. That's going to be 316, 317. So it's going to be a big last lap to be inside 420. What can they do? They really have got to bide their time out there. And I know for a fact there's some big kickers in this race. I really do. These guys, that pack you can see are all trained here at Ifley Road. There's five of them. Bowness, Barrington. Bowness, perhaps the one who's in the, you know, the, the best 1500 meter recent form. He's well raced. He raced just 10 days ago. And he's now going to give chase to Cornish. Cornish, where he's been all race long, he's done well to hold that gap. He hasn't given them a sniff. He hasn't showed them any weakness. He hasn't encouraged anyone to really attack him over the final lap. But as I say, that Barrington now, Matt Barrington, the tall figure, the Aussie in the shade is going to really try and work on that gap. And he's going to have to go some if he's going to catch Cornish because it's not like Cornish is tying up at all. Here we go then into the home straight. Cornish, Barrington, Bowness, Brad Burke's in there as well. The Renshaw's moving wide. Here they come. It's going to be just inside 420 or is it? Cornish, 420, terrific run. Barrington, Burke, Bowness, and they're all through. Renshaw there as well. Joe Edwards, he did a lot of the early running for the pack. Simon Dill coming across. And here comes Aiden Smith as well, the Hallamshire man. That completes the race. And wow, there you go. Well, if that gives you a little taste of things to come. And a lot of men in that field stepping down a distance. A lot of those guys tend to be 5,000 meter men, 10,000 meter men. So really stepping down and testing their wheels over the four lap dash. The famous mile distance. Next up is going to be race, the final open race of the afternoon. Race 13 of 13. And that's going to head off in just five minutes or so at 5.39.
Right then, welcome back. Race 13 of 13. This is going to round off for the open mile entries or races, shall I better put it. On the inside, you've got Alex Goodall, Oxford student, Ellswick Harrier. And next to him in the, uh, that's a retro South of England vest, actually. So that's uh, Elliot Smith, Rasmussen. 58, Jax Cunningham Marsh. Oakley Denson in the saw vest there. 156, Cameron Riley in that Yorkshire vest. Abingdon athlete as well. Adam Ede. No Ben Waterman lining up, but next to him, that's the Radley man. Alexander Mill Ingram and Joe Hudson on the outside there, Joe Hudson. And there you are. You're going to see Matt Fuller again there in the uh, in the Oxford dark blue vest, all blue, and the uh, white half tights, officially known as tighty whiteies. But he's a 352, 1500 meter man, so they're in safe hands. He's going to take them through the first 800, possibly a K in this one. He is due to pace the quickest race of the day as well. So it'll be interesting if he can take that. But this one, they're looking to go through in around about 2-2, which I think given conditions and how we've seen the rest of the races play out, might be a little bit ambitious um, for these men. But let's see what he can do. Let's see what they can do more importantly. So they wait the starters gun. So, Goodall, Rasmussen, Cunningham Marsh, Dennison, Riley, Ede, Mill Ingram, and Joe Hudson as well. That's your lineup, full of the pacemaker. Like I said, 202 at 800. I think this field are doing well if they can run, you know, around about sort of 206 is probably a bit more reasonable for them. It would be phenomenal if we can have, you know, guys running, operating at around about four. 404, 405 for the mile. But just, you know, given the breeze, given what we've seen out here today. But here we go, over to them. Race 13 of 13 in the open mile at the Ifley Festival of Miles. It has been a festival of a day. The sun has shone all afternoon. It looked doubtful that was going to happen with the rain early this morning. But away they go in this final race. Fuller to the front. Adam Ead, Abingdon Man. Trains over in Cardiff, my ad, under the watchful eye of James Thee. So. He's done a good job with him, and he looked like he wants to get after it a bit today. However, Fuller, well clear. And like I said, he, you know, he's been instructed to take them through in 202. And he's, he looks like he's on for it, to be fair to Fuller. But the field, they don't want to know today. So it's Raz, Smith Rasmussen as well in second place there in the South of England vest. That's the blue and the red. You can see that red stripe, but a nice pack forming as well. So let's see what they can do. I think it's Cameron Riley, and we're going to move round. He's going to slot himself into second place. So that Fuller all out on his own. Not really pacemaking at the moment. But I guess it gives the pack, it will give them a true reflection of kind of where they should be. Where that 61 second pace will be. And he's bang on 61, 62. He knows what he's doing, does Fuller. And that's Oakley Denson there. The man in the saw vest, looking good. It's a nice pack. It's a competitive field. And I had the pack through in around about 64, 65, which is probably a bit more realistic. Most of these guys back challenging that four minute, 1500 meter mark as well. So it'd be good if we can get our first sub 420 clocking of the day. We've had some really good races lined up here. 600 meters done. Still fuller, you can see. Sort of 10 meters, well, 20 meters or so ahead of these guys. But it's a good pack. And more importantly, they are sharing the lead a little bit. Mixing it up, not letting one man out to dry. As I say, that Denson has been up there. The Chilton Harrier for a little while now. As they're queuing up behind him almost. I think at some point you've got to kind of move around. It is Eid. Cunningham Marsh as well. Riley in there. And they're just, there we are, sort of three abreast. So it's getting a bit tactical. They are chopping for position. Now watch out for Goodall, the Ellswick Harrier. He's got 84 on his chest in the red vest as he's just gone through on the outside. He's a 153, 800 meter man. So he's got plenty of speed and he might just be biding his time in there. 
800 meter guys just never quite know how they're going to feel after they do two laps of the track. You know, what they feel like on that third and fourth lap is almost a lottery for them. But things now are starting to hotten up a little bit. And I think that's Hudson who is moving the pace on a little bit. I do apologize. It is Jax Cunningham Marsh, the Yorkshireman. Goodall as well. The Northern man running for Ellswick Harriers. He's an Oxford student. And these guys, as they approach, they're going to come down the home straight for the penultimate time. The crowd filling up here in the stands at Ifley Road. The famous Ifley Road. We saw a sub four minute mile here just over 50 years ago. But that is Cameron Riley, 156. Hudson wants to battle. A big battle to get to the front at the belt. Doesn't matter where you are with the laps to go. It matters where you are. At the end of the race in 400 meters or so time. But Hudson, that's why he wanted to get to the front. Because he felt good. And he wants to push on. He wants to start turning screws. Asking questions of this field. It's Riley who's at let him gap now. And Goodall's going to try and close that up. He doesn't want that gap to become too big. Down the back straight. Once they get past that 200 meter point. They're going to start having the wind on their back. It's Alex Goodall in second. Hudson out front in that Green, red, and white striped vest. And he's going to kick again. He's going to have to because he's got the hard closing good on. Watch out for Radley man. Neil Ingram of Radley. He's going to battle hard and things are hotting up over this last. There they are through the 1500 minutes. We're pretty much bang on four minutes. We might get a few sub four minute 1500 personal bests out of this one. But here we go. Hudson goes again. It looks like he's got the strength to win this one. It's been a beautifully judged race. He bided his time in the pack. It's Joe Hudson, ladies and gentlemen. Phenomenal running, 4.16, so he breaks 4.20, 4.18 for Goodall as well in there. And they're all coming in behind him ever so tight on the line. Adam Ede there, the Abingdon man, threw him 4.26. And there he is, Oakley Denson, who did a lot of the early running, almost paying the price there. He's going to come through in that final spot for 10th place. So great running from those gentlemen. That rounds off the open mile. That is it. Next up, we have the two elite races in 15 minutes' time. The women are going to go off at 6 o'clock. And at 6.30, the men's mile is going to go off. And they're going to attack that sub four-minute clocking, ladies and gentlemen. So be sure not to go anywhere. Keep an eye on the clock. Grab a cup of tea. And we'll see you back here in just a tick for those two elite races.
Well, welcome back everybody to the Elite Women's Mile. They're on the start line, getting ready to go. They've waited all afternoon. We've uh, we've seen the open races, all 13 of them. They've been and gone now. And now we turn our attention to these elite women. Here we've got on the inside, 151. That is Evie Powell. Next to her, Emma Hosham. I do apologize, there's no Emma Hosham in this. But we've got... Alexander Brown. It's Caitlin Shepard, actually, the one next to uh, Evie Powell. Alex Brown, Oxford student. Grace Malloy, also Oxford student. Isabel Ives, possibly the favorite in this one. 418, 1500 personal best. So that's just an example of the pace she can operate at. Alex Shipley on the outside is going to pace them. Look out for Eleanor Bolton as well, number 195. And she's in here. Her personal best, actually, set from Oxford, set on this track four years ago. Eleanor Bolton, she's an Oxford student herself, or alumni now, shall I say. She's moved on into the full-time workplace, but away they go then. Shipley to the front. Getting up pretty strong. Going to pace these ladies, you know, anything. Inside 4.45 is terrific running for these women, I must add. So, you know, that would equate to just outside of 4.20, 1500. Alexander Brown, look out for her. She ran 4.25 just on Wednesday. So fresh off a season's best herself. Grace Malloy in there. Good 5,000 meter runner for Oxford University. And mind you, just a bit of background on Grace was this morning out training. Some four minute reps on the local fields of Exeter Hartford. However, we turn our attention to the race in Shipley leading the way. We believe the track record's around about 4.30. So we're going to be, it's going to be terrific running if we get inside that today. Especially given the uh, slightly breezy conditions. Here we go then. Coming up to the first lap. I'll, I'll give you the, the lap split on the clock. We're 67, 68, 69, 70 through the bell there. Alex Brown moving herself up in a third place. Number 22 past her old teammate of Eleanor Bolton. Eleanor Bolton obviously known as a 5,000 meter, 10,000 meter specialist. Really very good on the cross country. Done terrific things for Oxford University. Now representing sports shoes out there who ironically enough are the sponsor of this event. They've done a terrific job in helping this event go ahead and jazzing it up. But we've got Isabel Ives who sits in first place if you like. Second place at the moment behind Shipley, but first in the race. Shipley, 600 meters. Is she just starting to tie up a little bit? I can see 145 on the clock, so bang on 70. So operating at 422, 1500 meter mark. Doing ever so well, these ladies to hold that pace in these conditions in the crowd. They really are lining up now on the home straight. You're gonna get a good sight of them to the left of me. Moving their way out, all looking to move onto the track. Because of that, we're going to lose a little bit of footage, but the noise is growing here at Ifley Road, Festival Miles. It's Izzy Ives. And in second place as well. Looking good where she's been all race. Iris Downs, the Shrewsbury athlete, she's looked fairly comfortable behind Ives. In second, on the shoulder, not even tucked in behind, on the shoulder. Look like she wants to make a move, but just biding her time. It's going to be an interesting last lap or so for these women. 700 meters to go. I can tell you they went through in about 2.22, so operating 71s on the clock. It's a tough battle now into the back straight. This third lap is the real crucial lap in a mile race. Brown is leading, as you can see, that second group. And next to her is Evie Powell. Under-17 athlete is Evie Powell. Doing a terrific job in there. But the two up front are neck and neck, side by side. It's Iris Downs and Izzy Ives. I do apologize. I believe it's Caitlin Shepard who just moved into third place. She's going to look to move past Brown, which she's done. As they come down for the penultimate time, then the crowd moving onto the track. As this race hoddens up out here. You are joining, you are watching the Ifley Festival of Miles at Ifley Road, the Oxford University Athletics track, the meet put on by students for you. Izzy Ives now, number 25 on her chest, 333. They're clipping off 71s. Can she do it the hard way? She's led the whole way in this race. But the person in second, Iris Downs, has not left her side. Third place, Caitlin Shepard, Alex Brown in there, Eleanor Bolton. It's going to be an interesting dust up between those two over the final lap. But look at the back straight now, just stretching out, approaching that 200 meter mark. They're going to get through the worst 
of the wind any minute now. Can Ives respond to Downs? Downs, if you like, has run the perfect race. Ives has been there to be shot at all race long. She's pushed it on. She tried to make a move of 400 to go. Downs now, but that gap is not opening it. How much fight does Ives have coming into this home straight? Brown and Bolton battling it out. Shepard as well in third place, further down the field. But let's turn our attention to the top end as they approach. They're through 1,500 meters in what is probably about 422. So bang on 70 second pace. It's going to be a dust up. Here comes Isabel Ives to respond. She has. Downs went to 200. Ives has got it. Look at this last 50 meters. It's phenomenal running. Izzy Ives, the favorite coming in. 4.43. Well, I said anything inside. 4.45 would be great running for these young ladies out there. Caitlin Shepard's going to come through as well for third place. Eleanor Bolton inside five minutes. What can Alex Brown do? She's going to be just inside five minutes. 4.59 as well. Good running from those ladies. They've been well raced as well this past week or so. Grace Malloy just outside five minutes. But what a race. That is your elite women. There we are. Take a look at them. Stretched out on the track. Goodness me. That's what a mile can do to you. Now we've got the crowd joining us on the infield, on the outside as well. This last race is going to be truly something. The elusive four-minute mile is upon us. We saw it broken here over 50 years ago. The first man ever to do it. Roger Bannister, 359.4. It was windy when he did it. The wind just dropped for the point of the race. We have a little over 20 minutes for that wind to really ease down and drop. But here we are. We're going to try and get some, some interviews perhaps with the, uh, the winner of that one, Izzy Ives. Terrific, terrific running, supporting this event. And uh, Tom Barrett's done a great job in really recruiting that elite field and looking to grow this event year on year here at Oxford. we got the sponsor of Sports Shoes as well. No fun standing still. That's their slogan. And uh, not, not looking to uh, stand still at all here at Ifley Road. Looking to grow this year on year on year. And this is really the home of the mile distance.
Well, there you have it. You're watching the presentation of the Elite Women's Race. Some phenomenal running from them. There you are, Caitlin Shepard. Third place for her in a time of 4.54. Delighted for her. Breaking that five minutes, pointing towards a 4.30. Two, that's three, sort of 1500. You know, add 20 minus 20 seconds, sorry, and that's about their 1500 meter time. There was a 15 split as well, so we'll get that to you officially soon. But a phenomenal run, then a great battle between Iris Downs and Isabel Ives. Downs, second place in the end, and the winner here she is, Isabel Ives, with an incredible last 100 meters or so. Really pulled away from Downs, they battled down the back straight together as well. There she is, Isabel Ives. She's going to collect 150. British pounds as well, of course, for being the Ifley Festival of Miles winner. So a great running from her. And here you are. That is to show these elite races aren't just for fun. There is prize money on show as well. 75 seconds for second place and 50 pounds for third place as well. So all three of them are going to take home a nice little paycheck. And show worthwhile turning up at Ifley Road this afternoon. Putting on a show out there today as well. So... Next up, we will have the elite men's race. And what a race we have in store for you as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. There you can see the crop of Cambridge athletes. One of them is going to be pacing. And Angus McMillan and Jeremy Dempsey, apologies, none of them will be pacing. But all three of them will be racing, that's for sure. And they'll be racing Oxford's Miles with a seed. And these guys did battle a few weeks ago at the varsity match here at Ifley Road. 
And they're going to do battle once again off Le at Ifley Road again over that mile distance, that famous mile distance. And why is it fam so famous? Well, if you don't know already, Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile here just over 50 years ago, 1954, May the 6th. And he ran 3.59.4. And will we see a sub four clocking? That man in yellow, Cam Allen, 3.41.1500 meter personal best. You could see it from him. He's in great shape. Not only is he in good shape, he's just run an 800 meter personal best of 151. So almost the quickest man on paper over 800 meters is Cam Allen, the tall, slight figure, number 14. There you can see the Cambridge gentleman, the three of them wearing the all white. The Cambridge singlet, Miles with a seat as well. He's on the inside wearing number one. No pressure on that indeed. Let's run you through a few more in this race then. So Jeremy Dempsey, that's the guy, center of picture, number seven, as you can see. But look, number four, Callum Elson. Look out for that young man. He's an NCAA Division II champion just recently. He's done over 20 races this year already. And that's when I say this year, I talk from January until June the 4th is where we are at now. And he won the famous Penn Relay Mile. He did only win it in 4.04, but it was a tactical affair. And if you win that race, you are very much worth a sub four miler indeed, even though if he didn't get it on the day on paper. But look, it's windy here at Iffy Road. You can see the flags are blowing. The crowd have turned out indeed. And this is live. This race due to go off at 6.30 p.m. The sun is shining. It's shone all afternoon. We've had a terrific meeting. We've had 13 open races. We've had the women's elite, which just got wrapped up. And now we're going to finish with this men's race. Dan Jarvis in there in the GB. All in one singlet. So no pressure on him at all. Just testing out the camera work as well. There we are. Yeah, you can see Dan Jarvis in that all-in-one GB suit, if you like. He's a steeplechaser by trade. A terrific 836 personal best for himself. He's one of Britain's best steeplechaser. But yeah, there you are. The three Cambridge men. Cam Allen. Callum Elson as well. Number 15. And that's going to be Adam Peacock of Brat. Look out for him. 18 as well. Justin Davis. Number 70 on the outside, Charlie Eastall as well. He's actually, I believe, going to try and pace make this race for them. And simple maths here for a sub four minute mile. You just need a run below 60 seconds for four laps of the track. 1,609 meters of the track. You need to run quicker than one minute. It is a feat that was deemed impossible 50 years ago. It's now common knowledge. But let me tell you, more people have climbed Mount Everest than have run a sub four minute mile. That shows you how difficult it is, people. It is by no means easy. The track record 356.6 set by Craig Mottram way back in 2004. So almost 20 years on from then. Not often we've seen a sub four mile here on this track. Here we go then as they await the starter's orders. Do these young men, the Oxford man, Miles Weatherseed on the inside wearing number one. He's done a brilliant job in putting this race together as well, along with the other Oxford students, Tom Renshaw, the meet director, and away they go then. And the crowd erupt. And I can tell you there must be 200 so or more people to my left on the infield in lane three. And they are really going to get behind these boys every lap of the track. As they settle in then nicely. It is very breezy down the back straight. You can see the flags. And there's the lap counter. She's going to change that to three any minute now. But like I say, Charlie Eastop is going to lead the way. The team bath athlete, Justin Davies. He's a talent himself as well. And they're on pace. They're inside 30 seconds for that first 200. What can these men do out here today? The crowd lining. We're going to have trouble seeing the stream down the home straight. Because, like I say, several hundred of them are going to cover this event. But I can tell you, I can report, it's single file. It's a hot pace. You can see the time. It's 
five on the clock. Inside 60 seconds means they're in business. They're well inside 60. Well, through in 59.60 at 400. And that was 409 meters as well. Bannister himself ran at 58 mid first lap. They got, went through pretty much similar to that, if not a fraction quicker. Now, look out for Callum Elson, the Division 2 champion. The one who got the kind of hype before, if you like. He is already a sub-4 minor. He's the only man in this field who has broken that elusive 4-minute barrier. He sits in third place behind Davies. But Charlie Eastall doing a brilliant job up ahead. Pacing very, very well indeed. And now they are stretched out. And there is a reason for that. All 10 of them, they are running inside sub four minute mile pace. And here they go, they're on pace, they're well inside. Two minute, 800 meter clock in as we just out to position. Now we have to raise the camera as the crowd raise the roof here at Ifley Road. Is sub four on the cars, 158, 159. <laughs> The 700 meter mark, indeed. Yeah, Cam Allen, as I was just saying, the tall man in yellow, 341, 1500 meter man. He's probably the man in form in this race, aside from Callum Elson. He's the guy you want to watch for. Charlie Eastall's done a brilliant job. He's taken them all the way to a K, and that was a K in 231. So they're going to have to close some to break four today. Dan Jarvis, well, he was a late entry into this race. He's in second place, he's looking comfortable. And uh, he had words with his coach. He was in terrific shape. And he said, look, I need a race. He contacted the, the crew here at Ifley Road. And they said, you're in. 150 pounds is up for grabs for the winner as they come down the home straight for the final time. And look at the crowd. Look at this iconic picture. The church, the flag flowing in the background. This is a rep of the four minute mile Bannis around over 50 years ago 3.04 at the clock it might be tough to break four minutes but they're going to try anyway Elson is going to have to turn some screws now the third lap just faded Cam Allen I've been talking about him all race long he's in third place and he looks comfortable and he's got arguably the quickest 800 meter time out of the field so expect him to have a hard close but it's Elson Jarvis and Allen Jeremy Dempsey and Miles Willis those two having a good ding dong for <laughs> And away they go around the Brendan. I do apologize if you've had any technical audio feedback just then, but it should be resolved as this race comes to a climax. 100 to go. Elson v Jarvis v Allen. Here they come. And it's Elson. He's going to the arms. He's got a terrific kick, but can he hold off Allen? He's all the way, and it's phenomenal. 402. Allen there as well. Jarvis in third. And you know what? Dempsey there's going to hold off Miles. With a seed of Oxford, he's inside 4010. And you know what? 402 in these conditions is phenomenal running. There is a stiff old breeze, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd played their part. And here comes the Cambridge man as well. Angus Harrington. And I'm sure I'm sure a few Oxford students will be delighted to see him struggle there. But it was all Elson today. Phenomenal running from him. He was the favourite coming in. And sometimes it's hard as a favourite to live up to the hype and deliver on the day. And everyone looked at him. They looked around for him to be the man to push the pace on, on that third lap. And although it slipped, he did pull it out the bag in that home straight. And like a true miler, they judged their effort. And they know what they got to do in that final 100 metres. They know how much to save. And he did that. Terrific run. But Cam Allen from the back. All the way up to second place. And Jarvis there, Mr. 194. You can just see him there. Good run from him as well. Four. There he is. Bit of a showman. He's the man in the speed suit. But that's going to be a big personal best. And near enough, his 1500 personal best as well. So don't forget, check the results. They're live on open track, feeding through. It's got 1,500 split as well. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've been on air for a little over three hours. It's been the Ifley Festival of Miles. We're going to be back next year. We really are. We had 13 open races ranging from around about just inside six minutes all the way down to inside 4.15 on that last one. Clip inside 4.20, I apologize. And then to finish off with that elite race is just phenomenal. And those lads are going to be rewarded with some big prize money from Sports Shoes who have sponsored the event. 
and helps this event go ahead. And look, this is going to grow, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be one of, want to be a part of it year on year on year. And there we go. We're going to see the men's presentation. So a brilliant turnout here at Ifley Road and some phenomenal racing. It really has been from the get-go and it just highlights the true art of distance running. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That all but wraps up the Ifley Festival of Miles this year in 2022. Expect to see us back next year. Expect this event to be bigger and better than ever as well. No track quite like it has the history of this event. It was the first place the sub four minute mile was broken. And you know what? We weren't far away today from another clocking. Those gentlemen put on a right display of athletics. Brilliant. Brilliant work. 4.02 was the winning time by Callum Elson. He was a favorite coming in and he delivered. He put on a show. And you know what? The crowd thoroughly enjoyed it. Great to see them turn out on such a good day here in Oxford as well. Take care. Until next time, I'm your commentator, Matt Seddon. It's been an absolute pleasure and we look forward to seeing you soon.